Hello everyone and welcome to uh, this section on rhetorical devices and uh, overview of tools to uh, express yourself with some uh, humorous additions at the end if you would like to be inclined to maybe perform something with a sense of humor. So let's get right into it shall we. Uh, we have an overview here and basically what we're looking at some of you might recognize this so I'm not gonna go that much into detail but We'll check these things out anyway. So we have the ethos, we have the pathos, and we have the logos. And then at the end, we have the little humorous tips. So this is how it would be. Starting off with the ethos, yeah. Um, and that basically means that when you are arguing, use credible sources. Don't just say random things without citing them or proving what they are by using research. And that's when you argue. And also when you argue, you have to present the opposing views accurately. Yes, don't say that you're the best and this argument that you have and you prove everything that you have and it's so great and it's really good. But if you don't like try to be critical against it, then people won't really believe you. So try to argue when you argue, try to present the opposing views as well. Yeah, in a good, fa well fashioned manner. Uh, also, when you argue, organize your thoughts logically. You have to like have a proper train of thought that you have. All right, so first I'm going to argue about this thing, then about this thing, and then about that. So, no, so there's a clear thought that your readers or your listeners can follow. Like, as I've done here for you, I've started to present. If we go back here, I've said... From the beginning, this is going to be about rhetorical devices. All right, what are those? Well, yeah, here's the overview. Look at this. The ethos, the pathos, the logos. Then logically, next slide would be ethos. And it is, as you can see up here on your screen. So that's how it works. In a sense. Uh, and going back to where we were, which is here. Um... Uh, it's also kind of wise to like establish a common ground with your audience. Like what people are you talking to? What do you guys have in common? Are you speaking in front of your classmates? Are you speaking towards someone who's more professional than you? Are you trying to get a job? Are you trying to impress someone? Think about this. Who's your audience? Make sure so you can relate to each other. Because everyone has some common points where you can find mutual interests or mutual beliefs try to know those before you start to speak so let's carry on uh, if it's relevant for you state why you're talking about your subject like at the beginning of this presentation i wouldn't say i didn't say that oh this is relevant to talk about uh, but if i would i would say something like the reasoning why we're talking about these rhetorical devices is to help my students or you um, to be more efficient writers or speakers. And then everyone will be, yeah, all right, makes sense. So don't forget to do that. And also proofread. When you have your script or your text or whatever you're focusing on or working with, proofread it at the end so that you don't miss out on spelling errors or grammatical mistakes or not having uh, introduced your subject properly or something like that. It helps you out a lot. And then more on to what we call the pathos. Uh, and that would be the emotional appeal. Uh, so what can you do to add emotion to your presentations? And uh, that can be quite tricky, but it can also be very, very effective to get your audience to really listen to you when they feel some emotional connection to what's going on. And so when you argue, uh, you can use emotions to enforce in your arguments, but make sure that you do not overtake your arguments uh, with emotions. The entire thing you're doing shouldn't just be about emotions. You still have to have that credible sense that we talked about during the ethos part where you cite your things, you prove that you have things right. Then you can use emotions to enforce, make these things stronger, but make sure that you do not use too much emotion. Because then everything is just, but yeah, but how can you prove this? So let's move on to the final part of 
their rhetorical devices that would be logos uh, and that is logic or reason and it's often we used in arguing and this is how it can look like just to give you proper two types of examples let's start with the first one here uh, we're starting here and so fair trade agreements have raised the quality of life for coffee producers so fair trade agreements could be used to help other farmers as well this is taken from the uh, Purdue Owl Writing Lab, now in 2020. Um, and this is called inductive reasoning. Basically, that you draw conclusions from facts. So, you have a fact that fair trade agreements have raised the quality of life for coffee producers. Good. And then you need to prove that, but we're not talking about that now. Um, but then you draw a conclusion from this said fact. So... Fair trade agreements could be used to help other farmers as well. That's logic, right? It's logical. It makes sense. Then we have the other one here. Um, the coronavirus spreads by humans traveling. So there's no reason uh, why it shouldn't spread to Sweden. And this is me. I made this one up. Uh, and this is deductive reasoning. So... Basically, you start with a generalization up here. The coronavirus spreads by humans traveling. It does. Uh, and then you apply it to a specific case. And so there's no reason why it shouldn't spread to Sweden. That would be the case here. Coronavirus spreading to Sweden. That's a specific case. So we have our generalization and then applying it to a specific case. That's deductive reasoning. If A happens, then B should be possible, right? So, that's some logical device there, yeah. And these are not, these are mainly used, or a lot, they use a lot when it comes to arguing, and argumentative texts and argumentative speeches, um, but can be applied to other settings as well. Just to remember, especially when we go back to just using logic here, Logic can always be good to use. Uh, emotions can always be good to use to appeal to your listener, right? So, but let's go back to the uh, here we where we left off and go to the final part here, which would be humorous strategies. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I have um, some of my students or some of you, my listeners, are um, focusing on. Uh, some more have been focusing a lot on stand-up comedy lately um, and to help you in your presentations that you're doing we have the rhetorical devices you just listen to but then i just want to mention a couple of things that you can have in mind if you feel that you don't really know what to do some tips and tricks uh, one is sarcasm and what is sarcasm well it is basically a, a bitter or sharp remark about something yeah so basically saying that, oh, someone, imagine if someone asks you, oh, how do you like to go to school? And then, and then your reply, a sarcastic reply would be, oh, I just love it. It's the best. I enjoy every minute there all the time. You see what I'm doing, yeah? It doesn't really make sense. Moving on. You can also make sure that you try to roast someone. And that is basically joking on at the cost of someone else or someone who's invited or someone special. So if you in a speech would roast me, then you would take like joke on things that I have made done in my life or that you know about me. Uh, some of these can be quite harsh. Uh, so for the people that I'm instructing, you have specific instructions concerning some rules and regulations which you can use but this is just a tip to look into this it can be quite fun actually um, another part if you don't want to roast someone else then you can always roast yourself um, and for me i think that could be uh, one of the easiest parts uh, just to make sure because you know everything about yourself and then you can make fun of yourself and that can be funny to others. Just don't try to make it too depressing. And yes, make it common. Like, try to have it on a common ground so people can understand what you are 
uh, joking about. Don't joke about like mental, if you have like mental illness or something. That can be quite rough to listen to for some readers if they're in a similar spot. So try to think about how will my audience react if I joke about this. That's just what I would do. If you want to do it some, in some other way, then that's up to you. Um, and just a classic one that a lot of people do if they try to impersonate someone else or they try to be more funny, they change their voice so that they sound more ridiculous and la 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 la. Something like that. Just to make, if it's trying to voice another character that they're talking about or just to um, just to create some kind of emphasis. And that's how it could work. And you can use all these terms, but that's up to you. So uh, thank you for listening and uh, good luck with your speeches or texts or whatever you're going to produce. See ya.